Some of you have not prepared yourself for what God has for you because you can't let sweet Jimmy go. Every man got to be measured up to Jimmy. If I don't see lightning and thunder, then I don't want him. You know what I'm talking about. But the good news is it's more, it's more rooms in a house than a bedroom. Amen, somebody. Amen. You, 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 got, you, you, can't, you can't hang up when God puts you on hold because some things we're asking for, we're just not ready for. Some things that we have asked God, some of you asking God for a car and don't have driver's license. <laughs> Lights are suspended and you run around, Lord, I'm laying my hands on this Mercedes and in Jesus' name is mine. <laughs> No, in the police hands, you're going to be if you don't get your hand off the folks' car. Some of us know that we asking God for things you're not ready for. Asking you for a house and you have not even paid your apartment rent. Hello, somebody. Asking God for all of this, you on Section 8 can't give up $8 a month. Amen. Amen, somebody. Don't look at me funny. Because you know I've helped some. All right now. But remember we have a finance class down there. And we're trying to teach you that if you want God to bless you, get in the position for it. Position yourself for God to bless you. If you want to be a wife, watch this. Become chaste again. Say, so Lord, take all the memories away from me of every man that touched me. And with your good looking self, or you think I'm just talking to women, if you want to be a husband, get a job first. Amen. Then get somewhere for her to live. Amen. Then get your credit in order so she can buy some. Amen. Well, don't nobody like that. Don't nobody like that. No. The women should be saying amen, especially the single women. You need to have brothers give you their credit report. Just like they get car facts before they buy a car. You need to get brother facts. Give me the brother facts on that. How many children? How many ex-wives? How many, how much baby mama drama come with you? Let me get a sobriety check on you. When the last time you was in a 12-step program? And could you please stop by and get a urine specimen so we can make sure you're clean? Then I need you to get an HIV test. See, see, we got we gotta put some parameters around this. If you want, if you want to be treated like a queen, you gotta go find some kings. You gotta find a man with some credit. That don't have 11 baby mamas, and we think somewhere that's cute. When God puts you on hold, don't rush to the altar with somebody. Yeah. Dragging him in here. Yeah. Gotta give him a breath man on the way so we don't smell what he's been through. What are you doing? When God... <laughs> People who were put on hold, watch this. Moses was put on hold for 40 years on the backside of the desert before God spoke to him at the burning bush. David was chased by Saul for 16 years in the wilderness before God crowned him the king of Judah. Jesus let Lazarus die and waited to show up at the cemetery, made Martha and Mary wait four days. Some people want what they want and they want it right now. We live in a microwave world. And if I can't put it in and take it out, then I don't want it. Some things you need to keep out and never put them in. Yeah, what you just thought of, that's what I was talking about. What just flashed in your mind. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. Amen, somebody say amen. amen. And then some people get through immediately. Jairus came to beg for the life of his daughter, and Jesus went with him immediately and made sure that his daughter was arising. The nobleman came to bed for the life of his sick son and Jesus healed him immediately. The woman who had been on that journey and had the issue of blood, she had to wait for her healing, but she never quit pressing forward. Somebody say, I'm going to press forward till my blessing comes. Some of us have to be like Jacob that we're going to hold on until the Lord blesses me. Some of you, you've let go, now you just need to grab on and hold on until the Lord blesses you. Jacob held on until the Lord blessed him. 
Jacob had to go through some pain to hold on to the angel. Yeah. It said that he had his hip pulled out of the socket because he held on, waiting on the Lord to yeah. bless him. Yeah. Some of us gonna have some pain, some trials, and tribulation, yeah. but God will show up and God will bless you if you don't hang up when He puts you on hold. Somebody in here needs to know God knows what you're asking for. God has. And he's just waiting till you get in position that you're ready for what you've been asking God for. God has never let his people wander too long. Forty years in the wilderness because he had to kill off a generation. We have to let our lives line up with God that our generations don't have to die. That our grandchildren and our children don't have to go through the persecution because we need to have a life that's obedient and in alignment with God. Amen. James was trying to tell us that we have to learn how to go through some things. We have to learn not to give up on everything. Right. Soon as it gets a little tough, we want to throw in the towel and say, I didn't want it anyway. Too many things are left behind as they should have been in front of us and still with us because we gave up on them too soon. Things that God had given to us, we don't have them because we let go of them and we wouldn't press on and we wouldn't go through the position of having to press and have to go through some stuff. Well, what's the press? The press is when something against me. I don't just give up. I don't give in, but I keep going on. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody needs to understand. I'm tired of giving up. I'm tired of giving in. I'm going to start going on. I'm going to start pressing on. I'm going to stick with the clock. God placed me in the clock. And from now to high water, I'm sticking with the choir. God, God has given us our being left undone. Looking around the church, things that you told me God told you to do, and they still not done. Because you gave up. God never give in on you. You just gave up. Anything that come easy probably is not even worth having. The things that I really appreciate the life are the things I had to work the hardest for. Are some things you have to work hard for. They're not going to come easy. It took 400 years of slavery before our people were set free. They didn't get it easy. That's the reason they appreciate it. That's the reason our kids don't appreciate nothing. But we want them to get it on a flower bed of ease. They don't know how to work for nothing. Too often we, we, we want to run to the rescue. Sometimes we need to step back and let God have his way. I've learned to let my boys become men by getting out of the way. Every time they call, the answer isn't okay. I'm on the way to Western Union. Tell them, get a job. Wait. Take and make a list of all the stuff you spent money on and figure out what you shouldn't have bought and next time don't buy. You don't have to have every iPhone. Well, I kid, but I don't want my kids to grow up like me. Well, what you want to grow up like? You mean you are at the church, dedicated to God, and have audacity and say, I don't want my kids to grow up like that. That's how they have to grow up. That's the reason Paul said when I was a child, I spake as a child. I'm tired of folk coming into church, 50 years old, talking about some goo goo God God. Grown folks can't say nothing to them because they're going to hang up on God. They can't hold on. If you tell them, wait a minute, boy, I, I, I don't have time, Pastor. God is trying to teach us that there are principles to life that we must subscribe to. And we must subscribe to a principle called wait on the Lord. Having patience and letting God do what God does. And then when you get patience with God, why not have patience for your brother? Oh, you don't like this one now. Why not have patience for that person you really don't like? Why not have patience for that person? Their voice alone is like fingernails on a chalkboard. If they start talking, you start walking. God is trying to teach us how to be patient with folk. He said the same aggravation you get from them, I got from you aggravated me like that, and I never left you. Now I want you to be my ambassador to them. Learn how to get along with them. I know every time you try to do something, they go contrary to it. Amen. He said, you did that to me. Amen. The Bible said, the Bible said, yes. like sheep, we all have gone astray. Yes. 
Isn't it good news that God didn't just leave you astray? Isn't it good news that God was persistent and patient with you? Some of us are on hold because we're focusing on the wrong things. We have to learn to focus in and hone in on our faith. We have to learn that we're on hold because our faith is what moves God. Our faith is what moves God. Our ability to trust God is what moves Him. God is not moved by your shouting, your tears. God is moved by your faith. If you don't believe me, every time, listen what Jesus said. He said, thy faith has made thee whole. When the woman came and she pressed through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. And he said he felt some God. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. If you're going to be made whole, if we're going to be able to get off whole with God, we have to have faith. You have to trust, first of all, that God heard what you said. Then you have to trust that God has the power to answer your request. Then you have to have faith that your request is in alignment with God's will. Some of us are asking God for some things you're not going to get because it's not in the will of the Father that you should have. Amen. Running around with this bad theology, talking about blabbing and grabbing, <laughs> calling and hauling, naming and claiming, bad theology. That's not how God intended for us to be. Yeah. Some of y'all be running around shaking some woman's hand, talking about in Jesus' name. That's still not your husband. Ouch. <laughs> Just because you touch it and think God is not going to agree to give you some of the stuff you're asking for. Hello, somebody. That folk running around here talking about the Lord told me to tell you. The Lord ain't told you to tell you. That. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The Lord didn't tell you to tell nobody that. Because you know what? If it's not in this book, if it's not in the book, I'm not, I, I, I can't stand in agreement with you. God is not doing all these things that we're blaming God for. Some of the stuff we're doing is just me. It's just me. It's my lustful desires. It's my wicked ways. It's my wicked imaginations. It's not God. And then let, let, let me help somebody else. And some of the stuff you're blaming on the devil, we ain't had nothing to do with that. That's just you. That's just you. The devil, the devil, the devil ain't had nothing to do with that. You need to just get honest and say, I did that. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't even consult with the devil on that one. That was just me. So, so sometimes we just have to man up, woman up, and say, I just have some bad thinking. So that the Lord can take you to Philippians in the second chapter and say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, so that your mind can be changed, that you can have a renewing of your mind that Paul called for in Romans. If God puts you on hold. Don't hang up. James tells us something about how to focus on our faith. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the winds, tossed. So what he's saying here, for let not man think that he shall receive any, that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. He's coming back to what he was saying in, in James 1 when he said a double-minded man. Is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. Some of us are just unstable. We rocking and reeling all over the place because we double minded. When you with this one, you talking like them. When you with that one, you talking like them. Okay, yeah. you didn't get that. Yeah. When you over here, you talking about this person. Yeah. You get over here, you're talking about that person. And then when they catch you in the middle, come on, I didn't say that about either one of them. Amen. Then that's when I'm sitting up in the office and just saying, this don't make no sense. Amen. That's how we get. We, we, we on whatever side look like they winning. Amen. I'm red when it's time to be red. I'm blue when it's time to be blue. But what I encourage you to do is get purple. Because that's royalty. Amen. Stick with the Lord. Leave all that other stuff alone. All that other stuff isn't worthy to be in the kingdom. The only thing that's worthy to be in the kingdom is kingdom building principles. Yeah. Kingdom building practices. Yeah. It's time that we learn how to serve God. Yeah. It's time that we learn how not to hang up when God says, wait a minute. Yeah. And it's time to learn how to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. It's time that we would understand.